So Ben Franklin said, nothing is certain in this world except death and taxes. And it looks like 2020 will be about at least one of those. Elizabeth Warren just coming out with the most aggressive proposal to tax the super rich in generations. It's a tax, a wealth tax on the top 0.1%, specifically fortunes larger than 50 million, and an additional surtax for billionaires. Now, that could raise around $2.75 trillion over a decade, but from just 75,000 households, which would presumably make it pretty popular among just about everybody else. That doesn't mean it's good policy or would have a realistic chance of passing Congress or could even be practically implemented. But it certainly got folks talking, like self-made billionaire Howard Schultz, who's considering his own run for president. He called the plan ridiculous. Warren fired back, quote, what's ridiculous is billionaires who think they can buy the presidency to keep the system rigged for themselves. That's what the kids call a sick burn. But class warfare has been a dirty word in presidential politics since at least the Great Depression, when populist demagogue Huey Long called for a share our wealth program. We say to America, 125 million, none shall be too big, none shall be too poor. I think he had a drink before that speech. But there's a reason this idea is coming back. The 26 richest people on the planet own as much wealth as half the world's population, according to Oxfam. In the U.S. alone, it's estimated that the top 1% control nearly 40% of the nation's wealth. And here's a specific example of why people think the system's rigged. The New York Times looked at Jared Kushner's finances and found that despite a net worth of nearly $324 million, he likely paid little or no federal income tax during the Obama years. And it was all legal. That helps explain why Warren isn't proposing an income tax hike, but a wealth tax on total assets. But total wealth is difficult to track and calculate. France bailed on the practice after 60,000 millionaires fled the country. The super rich are the ones most able to game the system or relocate. And that's why Warren wants to hire a boatload of tax auditors and impose a big exit tax. Now, it's true, the U.S. had a top marginal tax rate of over 90% in the 50s and early 60s. But because of loopholes and tax shelters, very few people actually paid it. Ironically, in 1999, Donald Trump proposed a one-time wealth tax over 14% back to pay down the debt. But as president, he blew up the debt and deficits with tax cuts for the rich. In fact, the U.S. Treasury is set to borrow a trillion dollars for the second year in a row to finance the Trump deficit. Look, Bill Clinton and Barack Obama got called socialists just for raising the top tax rate a few percentage points. Warren's plan is far more radical. And even if it passed Congress, it's unclear if it would be deemed constitutional. But a proposal opens the window of policy debate with ideas like raising the top rate for the super rich to closing corporate tax loopholes or raising capital gains rates for assets held under five years. Well, this could prove popular or it could compound the party's negative stereotype as tax and spenders. In general, Americans don't like raising taxes. And it's worth remembering that the revolution started in part with a tax protest in Warren's home state of Massachusetts. And that's your reality check.